Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another edition of the Sick Podcast, Talking Titans. Three Amigos are back, which is obviously a beautiful thing. Let's not waste a second. Sammy, start us up. Turn up your volume. Because you're about to listen to the Sick Podcast. Talking Titans. Levis, towards the end zone, got a man, touchdown! Wow! And it's the fourth TD pass of the day in the debut of Will Levis! The sickest Tennessee Titans podcast. Sick! It's gonna be sick. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, once again to another edition of the Sick Podcast, Talking Titans. I'm joined always by my two counterparts, Sharon and Vin. Vin is back again, thankfully. Happy to have him back. Uh, did you around. land the plane? I did. I did, he's yeah. Still, he's still around the globe. The is... Mysteries, as the great Christopher Moltisante yes. once said. He did. Definitely did. We're happy to have you back. We're happy that your uh, your miles continue to climb and climb. The reward's got to be rolling in. With, and no uh, climb America. even more, but we'll get to that part later. Yes, yes. we will. We yes. will. Before we start into our beloved Titans, let's – uh. Take a moment to thank our great sponsors. We got two of them today to talk about, as you've heard uh, from previous shows. Let's we'll start out with Manta Sleep. Uh, Manta obviously has incredible gear for anything you need as far as helping you sleep. Me, I know me and Jared use it. I know Vin said he used it as well. Uh, it's been helping me out considering I get home at 3 in the morning, and I know majority of my sleep is going to be with the sun up. So uh, I've been using it a lot. Uh, make sure to use our uh, discount code sick titans for 10 percent off your first order uh check them out again manta sleep m-a-n-t-a-s-l-e-e-p.com use code sick titans for 10 percent off jerry you want to talk about our second one or man i'm sorry i have have awful sleep apnea and that uh sample mask we we, that sample mask we got from uh, our partners over in manta went right to my wife and she has been using it Ever since, sometimes my snoring can be so strong, but you know, no test for the Manta mask. Yes, our next, our next uh, sponsor is uh, Homage. Um, you can you can check them out on the links on our social medias, especially uh, Instagram. We're new to the Instagram guys. Uh, Sick podcast, Titans. Um, they're high quality there. Uh, Sal's got it on right now. The angry runs. He busts my chops with the victory uh, Monday sweatshirt. I know Vin. Vin, is that a, a Homage? Uh, that is Homage. 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 Yes, homage. right there. Thank yes. you very much, homage for the gear. Comfy as could be. Comfy as could be. Love it. Go awesome. ahead. Thanks again, both of our sponsors. We're happy to have them, and we hope obviously they get all the success in the world. And you guys can help out checking their stuff out, using our codes and whatnot. But let's jump right into our beloved Titans. Um, as of about a couple hours ago, a little bit of breaking news. I don't think we should all freak out as much as some people are it's a little bit shocking we'll get into why uh pretty soon um but we have a, a player that's <laughs> retiring and um sadiq charles correct yes Did i said that correctly Shaq um, Charles. At, at the moment uh he was being he was our right guard in a lot of first team reps at training camp i didn't Think of him as the guy that was going to be the right guard going into week one. Maybe there was some momentum picking up for him to potentially take that spot. Um, you know, it's it's incredibly odd, if nothing else. not a good thing that a 25-year-old lineman on a team that desperately needs good protection is deciding to retire. Um, you know, he was not very good last year. Uh, he had like a 50 PFF grade. Didn't give up a ton of sacks, which is obviously ideal, but wasn't really necessarily – great at any specific thing in his position last year but he was a debt piece that was gonna have some opportunity he's gone now what do you think about that Jared? uh i mean just looking at the depth chart it, it is it is pretty wild to me that a first year guy who we kind of traded for was uh, slated at the starting right guard at the first depth chart behind brunskill and ray dunes um ray dunes is his backup so does that slide ray dunes up the depth chart obviously if he's behind charles um, I want to know why Brunskill's moved from uh, the starting right guard spot and the backup center to Cushenberry. I thought uh, Daniel Brunskill was very reliable in San Francisco. I thought it was reliable um, with the Titans last year. He was surrounded by crap last year, uh, let's be honest. So, I mean, his play and grade may have been terrible, but 
he was kind of one of the most reliable linemen. I mean, he missed a couple games, but he was one of the best ones on the offensive line last year. I think we all can agree, right? Yeah. So uh, I don't I don't know why uh, Bill is going to make him a starting player as a backup to Cushenberry. I, w- I would have liked to see him um, slated in front of uh, Raidens, but I don't know. We'll see how it plays out. I mean, maybe Sadiq Charles just didn't have the makings of a varsity athlete. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes it happens. And listen, who knows why people retire and do the things they do. Wish them nothing but the best, but I'm not going to lose any sleep over it. It seems like we have a handful of internal <laughs> options with Ray Dunes and uh, Brunskill. That's Jared's boy to me. He was very average last year. Um, we'll see. I trust Bill Callahan to, yes. you know, find a right tack or right guard and also right tackle really somewhere on this roster and make it at least formidable. Um, but I'm not losing any sleep over, um, you know, this kid retiring. Hope he's well and uh, wish him nothing but the best. But, you know, it's, it's the next man up. So it is what it is. So I'd like to see Ray Dunes take the job, though. I'm not going to lie. I'd like to see him come to his own. He showed flashes over the years at different positions as a swing lineman. I would like to see what he could do with um, Bill Callahan, you know, molding him. So we'll see. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be – it's going to be – I'm sorry, Jack. No, go, 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 go. No, it, real quick. It's going to be obviously Ray Dunes' last shot. So he's going to obviously yeah, I mean, probably get more opportunities year, I now. His third, third, I think. Year. I think this will be his third. Third or fourth. Um, fourth. I said fourth. This is his fourth? Yeah. Well, he was say. he towards ACL one year, so I think he missed he, most of the year. He came in with uh, Caleb Farley, I believe. Hmm. Well, either way, this is it. You know, if he's, he's going to get more opportunity now. Um, if he doesn't make the best of it, that's, that's another project gone. So at least we'll have more answers sooner than later about him. And then we could fill that spot in the roster with someone who could produce if it is not going to be him. So that's a positive spin up on it. Ahead, Speaking Jay. of opportunities, guys, uh, the official depth chart just came out. I know we have it. It's very small. We have it on our phone. So we're going to walk you through it just a little bit. The thing that popped out to me, guys, uh, I don't know about you guys, MPF slated right at the starting right, right uh, tackle spot. He's, he's missed time. He has three practices. What does that show, and what does that show to you guys that a guy like that comes right in? I mean, he, he could be, you know, in the classroom, you know, learning from Bill Callahan, but the depth there, you know, Leroy Watson, who else we have? Um, Jaylen Jaylen Duncan. Duncan. Jalen Duncan, John Ajoku. Like, what are those guys, you know, I, I was listening to RKW this morning, and, and they were talking about um, John Ajoku is going to be that swing tackle. He's going to be that, you know, power you know, power lineman that's going to come in for the extra lineman, extra tight end in there. And Jalen Duncan, he's just so raw. He just needs to develop a little bit. So, like, MPF, he hasn't played, what, a year a year and a half now? And just like, ended six games last yeah. year. And, and got hurt. Yeah. So, but listen, as a, as a rookie, he did flash a little bit. I think he had that right tackle spot locked up. Uh, had he not gotten suspended, maybe – you know, that was an eye-opening moment for him. And who knows, maybe he's been performing well. Obviously, he has been if he is number one on the depth chart as well. That's also a job I would like to see him take. I think we did use, even though it was the John Robinson regime, you know, a third or fourth round pick on him. So high draft pick. Kid has upside. Maybe we could mold him into a right tackle as well. But with the plethora of linemen we have, you know, I have all the faith in the world in Callahan finding a starting five. And it seems like we have depth as well for the first time in forever. Um, and not to say I don't worry about Will Ellis's right side, I do, but that blind side, that left side seems to be tight and secure. Or at least we know what we're headed to going into the season with. So Yeah, I mean, listen, we have a elite world class coach at that position. Best so, of all time, maybe. The best of all time. Yeah, possibly. So, <laughs> you know. No matter what the circumstances are, we have to feel confident that Mr. Callahan is going to do the absolute best with what he is presented with. And he's got a lot of good pieces that he has right now that he can either get better or uh, basically shape uh, as they just enter the league. So um, a lot to look forward to still. But again, th- there's some questions that are going to be raised about this. Uh Did it have anything to do with the culture of the locker room? Did it have anything to do with any of the coaching staff? Why someone who just a month ago posted on Instagram or social media per se um, about, you know, year five and how excited he was, and now he's retiring, walking away. 
you would like to think there's a lot more to do with it personally that, you know, even if there was a lot of bad things going on, didn't like that he wouldn't just decide to not play football anymore and miss out on a paycheck, but it doesn't make a lot of sense. You know, yeah. there's a lot of things that are going to be raised about this and it's obviously not a positive thing in any form that this is happening. So it's not ideal, you know, literally a month away from the season, but like I said, we have their pieces in play and a, and a great leader there. So I got a lot of faith still, and I'm not going to lose any sleep over this just yet. You know, yeah. just to switch roles now um, with depth, just what Vinny was saying, um, Titan signed Quadra Diggs, safety, another one. We're just loading up on the secondary. I mean, it, it, it's fun to see because we've lacked it for so long in the secondary. Um, Diggs, 24 interceptions, 15 interceptions the last four years. He's played every single snap, knock on wood if you're with me. Um, last four years, very reliable. Uh, for me, I think this is obviously what Denard Wilson wants to do, like he did with um, the Ravens last season. They were all over the field, a lot, multiple safeties, cornerbacks. They all played well. This bumps Jamal Adams into the dime package, like we've been talking. You can play him at linebacker. You put a, a natural cover um, safety with uh, Quandre Diggs, and now you have Amani Hooker over the top. I don't see anybody throwing on us, guys. I mean, we're just loading up, loading up, loading up. They say that there's more pieces to come. In my opinion, we're weak at the edge. You know Rand Carthon has edge circled very soon here. When the cuts start coming, if a trade happens, edge is coming next. What's your thought on that? Yeah, I mean, you know, it's funny that we went from having one safety really on the roster that we liked, but, you know, had zero depth behind him to having what now seems like a plethora of safeties. And yeah. listen, who, maybe they're listening to the pot a little. You know, they come up with a – they signed, uh, you know, uh, Jamal Adams after the day after we talked about it. I think it was you and I, Jared. Uh, and now we said we could use some more help. Maybe we'll sign someone else, and they did. So, listen, for one, it's a low-risk, high reward for both Adams and Diggs. I couldn't love it more. You can get creative now. This secondary from top to bottom, I mean, Snead, Awuzie, McCrary, um, Hooker, uh, Diggs, Adams. I mean, it seems loaded. It looks great on paper. Yep. Hopefully Denard Wilson, Denard Wilson can make it come to fruition. And, um, you know, because that defensive line is lacking a little bit. You know, hopefully not as much as we might think it might be, but we're going to need top-notch secondary play because who knows the amount of pressure we'll be able to get regularly, especially with Arden Key uh, out the first, I believe, six weeks of the season. So, you know, I, I love the signing. Low risk, high reward, and hopefully we get the best out of them. Yeah, I mean, listen, he's a pro bowler two years ago. So, is you know, he's 31, but we know the high caliber play was just a, you know, breath before he, he showed up here. So, that's a, a, obviously promising. Um, the fact that he's going to be with Jamal Adams is going to help him mesh with the locker room, I think, having a friend there that he knows has a lot of familiarity with. Um, so, another hole that was filled from Rand. You, you know, you, you can't say enough about what Carthon's done. He's essentially answered the bell on damn near everything this fan base has so desperately wanted, starting with a franchise quarterback, some death at running back, which allowed us to not necessarily alleviate Derrick Henry, but move on from him so we can progress this offense into the 21st century, which we haven't done since we became a franchise here in Nashville. Um, and uh, it, it, he's just done everything. All that's left to do is produce and these players to perform at the level that we expect them to perform. And, um, you know, I, I still think there's a little bit of questions on the O-line, which I was the most important part, which is a little scary, you know. Um, but overall, we can't ask for more. We're going to be a throwing team by default. Um, and uh, we have a kid that we think we can trust. And he seems very confident in his position. And he's excited to be the leader. And he's already doing things to show he is the leader. So, Sky's the limit, man. Uh, two uh, two days away. We're a month out. Yeah. So um, I think the best way to, to be fair about the Derrick Henry departure is obviously we loved him. You almost have to look at it as addition by subtraction. Yes, we oh lost. My God. We lost Derrick Henry, arguably the best back of this last decade, a top tier back in this franchise. Would uh, hands down be number one if us not having you know historically great running backs, which he still could be the best out of all of them. Um, but we let we let go of him, yes, but we gained, you know, a two a two headed monster, in my opinion, that is gonna be much more, you know, you'll see in a much more modern NFL offense, which this team hasn't had, like Sal said, since the inception of the franchise. So just wanted to put that on paper. 
Yeah, and, and like you, you're talking about depth. You, I mean, we're, me and Sal touched on this, Vin, while you were away last week. Jarvis Brownlee Jr., this guy's all over the field. Sneed had a press conference earlier um, this week, or last week, I mean, and he said that Brownlee Jr. reminds him of himself. I mean, this guy's all over the field. Have you seen any, any clips lately of him? Of Brownlee? No, not yeah. really. I mean, that's just another added piece. I mean, if you subtract, you know, Caleb Farley, you subtract Trey Avery, and you gain that, I mean, this is just a nasty, nasty, nasty bunch. And another you thing – like, like him being in a, being such yeah. a young guy in a room full of really veterans that have proved themselves in this league, mm-hmm. you know, bodes well for his future with this, if not this year, just because it's a numbers game and, and it's a depth thing, but going forward – could be one of those diamonds in the rough, like a Sneed was, you know. Yep. Was Fourth again. Yeah, seventh Finnegan. round. Yeah, exactly. So, some teams round. Round. One of the Yeah, other. it was late. No, nah, Finnegan, I think, was seventh. He was real late. But, um, yeah, maybe we got a diamond in the rough with him. We, we, we shall see. But I feel plenty confident about this secondary headed into the season. Another, another thing um, Sneed said that, that, that really stood out to me. He said that Murray is really taking charge of the offense. Kenneth Murray. As a leader, right? As a leader. To me, like when we when we signed him, we really didn't know. I know he had a high motor. He was an uh, ex-first round draft pick out of Oklahoma. He had a crazy amount of tackles there. He, 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 you know, his motor just doesn't stop. I think now with the pieces around him at linebacker, you're going to have that true linebacker. But I think he's going to be that go guy. You know, yeah, we lost Arden Key. I think we're going to have another player. Like I said, we're going to bring him. But I think what we're hearing now that they're just going to make him a spy, and they're just going to make him go and just go, go, uh, go like a heat-seeking missile. Just go get the. I was just going to say because he cannot play going backwards and, and go and drop it in the coverage. He is a yeah. you know, one-speed kind of guy. Which hey, um, I'm nothing wrong with that as long as you hit the person you're supposed to hit. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, moving on from that, which we somehow just glazed over, obviously we were going to get to it, but we got a football game this weekend. It's crazy yeah. to think, but we're heading to, uh, San Francisco or right. I think that's no, San, 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 yeah. it's okay. It's home. Uh, first preseason, of the game, uh, pre- first preseason game of the year against the Niners. Um, Mr. Callahan made it very clear that it appears a lot of players <laughs> that you're going to be seeing in Chicago are going to be playing in this game Saturday. Now, the extent or how much we will not yet know until uh, it's game time, but um, it looks like if nothing else, we're going to see Levis play a series, which is fucking crazy. I love um, how you brought this up. I, I would assume it's it's going to be all handoffs, and I honestly kind of hope it is. <laughs> but uh, we're going to see Titans in their gear, and they're going to be tackling people, and I'm going to be glued to it like it's a playoff game because I've just been waiting so long. But uh, what, what are some of your thoughts, Jared? Go ahead. So I, I love, like I said, I love how you brought this up with the playing time because we know they're going to play. I want I want your reactions, and this is maybe the first fight that we have on the offseason. I, I mean, going into the season here. All right. So, to I me, so. <laughs> nah, well, I mean, we'll see. But to me, like that, like like they said, we need to gel. The offensive line, in my opinion, needs to play until half. Okay? Oh my god! They need to play until half. Will let us get a new get a new meme out of me. That's that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> I mean, they need they need to gel, correct? And, and who knows? We will we'll see on Saturday. Will Levis needs to play three to four drives. So that that may bring him into the second quarter. Okay, because. Theoretically, guys, they're not probably going to play um, the last preseason game. They're going to play, and that's it. All right, they need to they need to work against San Francisco, and they need to work against uh, mm. Seattle, in my opinion. I but don't they, think. So. I ahead. mean, it's, it's going to be uh, against. It, it should be against bums. So. Yeah, I mean, I, I think you see them no more, no more at most two series. First, yeah, I was going to say the first quarter if that's two series, three, but. I agree they need to play up until a certain extent. You said they need to gel. Jared, they need to live to gel, though. And God forbid. Oh, of course. Yes. You don't want to paint somber tones. But this offseason has just gone so accordingly. You know, let's just at least see it out in regular season. You know what I mean? Damn, I got some, some thunder coming down South Jersey. Yeah, me too, yeah me too. it's crazy. I mean, listen. Uh, uh, yeah, God I mean, forbid. Think- God forbid Fred Warner's in the fucking game for the first series. And he decides ah. to Stop. Blow by Shit. somebody. Shit. I'm just Sammy, saying. Mute. Like, Sammy, mute him, please. <laughs> say it. I'm, I'm, I'm saying it so we don't do it. Yeah. yeah. Nah. I, mean, I mean, yeah. I think, I think it could be a series or two. Jared, I don't see. I understand what your, your, your school, of, you know, thought there. 
want to see them gel, but that's something they've been doing in camp. They'll have a series. I don't think they'll play more than a series or two uh, each game. Probably not at all the last game, maybe a few plays, but I think the first two games you might see them for two to three series in each in each game. And, and that's don't really be surprised. Don't be surprised if he keeps I, w- I will be surprised. I will be surprised. I don't know. We'll another see. thing, another thing, since we're on to the game, um, I, I thought this was a funny conversation because I, I was just sitting there thinking today, you know, looking at videos from training camp. Did you guys see um, Teandre Sweat? Tavandre Sweat, I'm sorry, pronunciations. Um, swim move over Law Cushionberry the other day. Yeah, I did see that. Sal Sal, uh, Sal got a little excited. You know, he said he's on the train and everything. Um, heard a lot um, from um, Sweat this, this this past week that he's been turning heads. Also, you know, probably listening to the pod. Us talking. Yes, probably. Yes. The yes. Motivation. We're we're here for motivation. We're trying That's to get right. the best out of the Tennessee Titans. That's right. Um, Want to have a little fun little game with you guys, um, just to see what his production would be. What do you think his stat line would be good for you guys going into this year as a rookie? I think it's hard, it's hard to judge someone who plays a position like that because it's, there's so Just many. To miss that line. That's all. I mean, I, I don't know. You'd like to see, you know, a handful of sacks and a handful of, you know, tackles for loss. That's really a position where stats don't really equate. Yes, to correct. correct. He's, he's all about pushing the pocket, disrupting yep. in the middle of the field, being a run stuffer. Yep. Would you like to see a handful of, of sacks and a handful of tackles for us? I'll go over on there because it is a weird stat for a defensive tackle. I'm going to say three and a half sacks. I think that's a good number. And Fair then tackle, tackles for loss, you're going to say, you know, eight tackles for loss, hopefully throughout the year where he's just, you know, disrupting and making somebody fall in the backfield, you know. But we'll see first off how well he holds up in the NFL. He's looked great this last week. This is about the first week he has looked good. Not to be pessimistic about it, but um, you know, since he's really come on as as a you know our second round pick, but you know, as long as he's a disruptor in the middle, the stats will come. You know, but yeah, I think I mean, the number three and a half and eight is that a fair line? Listen, the I, fact listen, that, I, I love it. The fact that he's that size and he's going to be playing literally next to Jeff Simmons, he made Jeff Simmons look like a regular person in that. Yeah, picture. I'm sorry. I I, I mean that was this, wild. This pick, no matter what way you slice and dice it, to a lot of people was a reach. Not to everyone, but to, to a fair amount of people, this was a reach. So if, with that, if, because of the DUI, if not for the DUI, he probably would have gone in this in this ring. I don't even know if that was really it. I don't know. I could, I could be wrong. I don't want to go too much on that part of it. But my, the bottom listen, line is, in my opinion, him. in my opinion, it, he needs to be very impactful here. One now, listen. We had a little argument about how impactful Harold Landry was last year, and how many sacks did he end up with? Twelve and a half, I think. Right? Twelve and a half. Now, on most people's table of measure, that would be an incredible season. Not incredible, but a really good season. I don't know if I can label that a really good season because I can't remember one in really impactful play that Harold Landry had. So I'm not going to really worry too much about the the, the sacks from that position. I think with Jeff next to him, he should have no problem breaking five in year one. I really don't think that should be a problem. It's a lot. It is a lot, but this guy is huge, and he's a second-round pick, and he's a high second-round pick, and high second-round picks should be very impactful, especially when you play next to a damn near close pro Bowl defensive lineman. So All pro. All pro, so, all pro, not so yet, just, but just like what Vinny was saying, you could be no, impactful. An you could be impactful. Never been an all pro. He's never he been an all pro. Not an all pro yet. Second, nope. second team all pro. Second team. Yeah. So, like Vinny said, you can be very impactful and, and disrupt the and disrupt the disrupt the game and be uh, have a great stat line. For me, I think a great season for for Sweat would be like a twenty five tackle, seven to six tackle for losses. And was, like I said, yeah. Vinny said. Perfect. Three and a half sacks. If he's in there clogging the run, stopping the run, yeah. and, and those stat lines and helps Jeff get double digit sacks, that's a win. That was my point. Head. Like the, yeah. stat, the, the sacks aren't necessarily going to mean much to me per se, but at that position, they, they, they have a little bit more, they hold a little bit more weight because it's a much more difficult thing to do. Yeah. Um, Cause you're, you're looking at men that are sometimes a little bit larger than the guys yeah. on the outside. But yeah. with that being said, the fact that we'll know, we'll know immediately, like very soon, we'll know 
if he's going to be impactful or if he's even on the right track. Like, it shouldn't be hard to tell with his size next to the player that he's going to be next to um, if this is going to be something to be excited about or something to be nervous about, okay? If he's not making impactful plays against the Bears, like, if I don't see a couple impactful plays, I mean, maybe I'll give him two or three weeks. Yeah, I mean, come on. we got to give the kid some time, Sal. So. And you gotta, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta agree. Like this is a seventh round pick, though, Vin. This is a glorified no. first rounder. It's a glorified first rounder. This kid. Don't hold it's it against him. It. This high. It's not. He's not going to come in overnight and, and knock the door off. You I'm not saying knock the remember. door off, but I want to hear his name called in the yeah. first couple weeks. I'd be a starting defensive all. lineman. Don't we all? Don't we all? So I'm not, not going to throw in the towel, even if it's not. I'm just going to start. I'm going to be nervous if I don't hear his name called. It. You know, by the. Packer game. I'm going to be a little nervous. That's all I'm saying. The September football is like preseason still. So, like I said, if we survive and we get to two and two or three and one, like cross your blessings because it's still yeah. preseason football. So, I'm just saying, like I, yeah. in the first couple games, I want to say, like, all right, yep, that was a, right, he, we got we fucking, got a guy, we got a dog. He busted, yeah, he but if nothing else, he busted through the line of scrimmage and made him throw it out of yep. bounds. Like, yep. It was a couple things like that. I'm not talking yep. about forced fumble, picked it up, took it to the house. Yeah. You know, I just want to I want to know that I want to be able to see that he's uh, he, his presence is known very soon. And if it's not, then you should be worried. That's all I'm trying to say, because it's just he's too big. He can move too yeah, quickly. I, no, I he's not I throwing dudes around. I don't real early. I, I don't disagree. I just think, yeah. it's, you know, we have to have patience with him. like yeah, we do with everybody. You know what I mean? So we'll see. As Titan fans, we have no choice but to be patient yeah. with almost everyone we draft. Yeah. So. With the exception of a few running backs. Good show. Did we want to uh, break the news elsewhere? Are we going to wait on that? You know. I think we can wait until next show. What do you think, fellas? Yeah, we can wait until, yeah, make sure everything's. Yeah. All our signs are dotted. All our T's are crossed. All our T's are crossed. Our mics are smacked. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, we'll yeah, the, but, um, well, I'll tell everybody. I'm coming in at right tackle. They're bringing in Sal the speedster <laughs> with DeAndre Hopkins now. We can't yes. find a spot for Jerry yet, but we'll I'm actually see. also just, the new just assistant know, GM. Yeah, just know the boys. Like I said, the boys got something cooking, yeah. and uh, you're not gonna want to miss it. Yeah, a little quick hanger for you. I'll tell you what, though. Like before we before we go, I've been watching Hard Knocks. I think I have one more episode left. The Giants one, and I'm saying to myself. Man, I feel like if I was the Titans assistant, assistant GM, not even the GM, and I was just there with, in the room with Carthon, I feel like I would, I could definitely make a serious impact. I really could because it's just like some of these moves. You heard it, Sal, man. Yeah, I'm so ser- and I know everyone watching, everyone watching is just going to be clamoring behind me, uh, rallying behind me, possibly getting anointed the assistant GM. But like, if nothing else, the job seems amazing. The whole process, I, I would pay probably ridiculous amounts of money, more than you would even think, if there was a possibility that I could have cameras inside of that oh, building yeah. and watching the like the negotiation for Ridley and Sneed and hearing mm-hmm. and all. I would it, more than you think. That would be awesome. So, oh my God, I can only pray one day we'll have the opportunity to maybe get an inside look into that uh, sports park. But still. Great show either way. But, guys, as always, thanks so much for watching. If you're not uh, subscribed, please do. We've been picking up a lot of steam with our subs. I made the – the um, what's the word I'm looking for? The goal. I want to get to 5,000 by the end of next year. I want to get to 5,000 subs by the end of this season. If Mr. Levis does what I think he can, I think this, this freaking channel could pick up as much steam as our Titans. So, please, if you are watching you're not sub, please do it. Hit that bell. Make sure you always know when we're live or shows are on uh, Spotify, Apple, everywhere you listen. Make sure to to follow, comment, thumbs up, all that good stuff. More traction, the better. So anything else, guys, before we uh, wrap up tonight? That's it. it. I'm uh, I'm not traveling anywhere in the next few weeks. So we should should, uh, all three of us be together for the foreseeable future. There you go. I'm on vacation Saturday. So Uh, are you? Yes. One guy's feet touch the ground. The next, the other one they go right <laughs> up in the air. That's it. Up, huh? Step your game up and leave. Uh, leave West Caldwell, New Jersey. West Caldwell. I'm not even West Caldwell. So let's start there. I'm in Rockaway right now, but we'll get there. But uh, listen, guys. Again, thanks everybody for joining in. We'll make sure to keep you up to date all the latest night Titans news, and we'll certainly see you next week. So as always, tighten up. And Sammy, you know the drill. Send us out. 
And that's a wrap. Hope you don't miss us too much until next time. Follow the sick podcast Talking Titans on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Google Play, and Apple Podcasts.